So you remember a little while ago, we talked about a patent from Razer that looked like they were developing a device very similar to the Nintendo Switch. It, it was similar, basically the same idea, right? It was going to be a tablet that had detachable controllers and everything, and people looked at it, a lot of people actually, and said, that, that looks just like a Switch. And, I mean, you could do that, right? It's not like they're technically copying off of their IPs or anything like that. It's it's straight up. It's competition. I'm, I don't think Razer is going to sell, you know, 40 million of, of their devices or anything. But the nice thing about that is we can kind of see some competition there where uh, I, I guess just in general, these mobile devices can start to evolve and improve if several companies are working on them. Well, another device was introduced today and... It, it, they look like Joy-Con controllers. What's funny about this is I looked at it and I said, okay, yeah, those look like Joy-Cons. And then I looked around at a lot of places that got to cover them and have hands-on. And like every one of them talks about turning your phone into a Switch at this point with, with these things. And here's the thing. I, I don't think these are, again, going to compete with Joy-Con controllers or the Switch or anything like that. But it is interesting uh, to see companies now like Razer, just as an example, we're seeing start to develop... Controllers that are very similar to, to the Switch Joy-Con, and that, of course, is because the, the Joy-Con controllers have been very successful at this point. I mean, Nintendo releases a new color, and a lot of people go out and buy it anyway, but uh, it's it, it really is telling kind of how Nintendo managed to do something like the Joy-Con, and it working out. Now, companies before had done this. We talked about Game Vice, who attempted to sue Nintendo over it didn't work out for them. That, uh, that, that lawsuit got dropped and everything, so don't really worry too much about that now, but check this out. This is the Razer Jungle Cat. Yeah, you can see, I mean, you can see right at the top, uh, pretty much everyone that covered it, whether it's Android Authority uh, or Geek.com, they all said it, it, in some way it turned your device into a Nintendo Switch. Now, this uh, in this picture here is showing a Razer phone, but this is the Razer Jungle Cat turns your Android phone into a Nintendo Switch. And yes, these are but look like two different Joy-Con controllers that attach to either side. Now, there is a lot more setup, I think, here compared to the regular Joy-Con controllers that are specifically designed for one device, whereas there's a, there's a lot of uncertainty as to which device you're going to use these Joy-Con controllers for, and that is the advantage that the Switch, of, of course, would have over phones. There are so many different phones, but there's only one Switch that the Joy-Con controllers would actually slide onto and attach to. That's the same issue that, uh, like, PCs will run into when it when we compare games being developed for a closed-box system like a PlayStation 4, an Xbox One, or a Switch, and uh, at that point being developed for a PC, which is an open platform, and you could have an NVIDIA card paired with an AMD CPU, you could have so much RAM, that kind of the variables are all over the place. But let's take a look at this a little bit because we had a couple of different images of this and some interesting features. Here's the thing that comes down to this. The features that are kind of being introduced here could end up being something that maybe Nintendo looks into going into a next-gen uh, Switch, or maybe they even have some ideas of new revised Joy-Cons that people have been asking for. Maybe they have an idea of like a Joy-Con Pro or Premium, I don't know. There, there's a lot of things that could happen. However, Nintendo will generally use kind of slightly older technology and then do different things with it. So this could be, I think, something that could happen in the next gen switch, you know, years from now. But let's take a look at this. This is, uh, like I said, the Razor, Razor Jungle Cat. We have some pictures here and we have uh, a few things, including the price. By the way, the Joy-Con controllers that we buy now for $80 for a pair is seen as expensive. This is $100, though, for these two. Uh, it has the symmetrical sticks at the top. Let me go ahead and uh, kind of click on one of these. We'll get the image up here. It has the two symmetrical sticks at the top. As you can see, it's all black. Uh, it is using the same caps, as far as I can tell here, as, as the Switch. <laughs> kind of funny there. Uh, and then it has those two LEDs kind of at the top right and left. Those appear to light up green when they're in use, although you might be able to turn those off, as there are some pictures where, where they're not on. Um, and we can see the D-pad there separated. Reminds me somewhat of the PlayStation 4 D-pad. Uh, yeah, actually, it looks very similar. I think those might be spread out a little more, but there's still, of course, buttons on the outside. I'd be curious to see if it is a D-pad membrane under there. Under there. 
or if it is just four separate tactile buttons. Uh, and then we have, of course, A, B, X, Y with A and B flipped around from what we've seen with uh, the Switch Joy-Con controllers. And we have start and select at the bottom there. I am curious how, how this would go over for people uh, because A and B are down. Either way, you end up with that claw grip and it does not appear that the grip that they that they sell it with has any kind of uh, any kind of grips that are coming out of the bottom. I think I would have preferred that, of course. If Look, if you're going to make Joy-Con controllers and you're going to go this far, you might as well go all the way and make your own grip-based, you know, setup where you have a spot for your palms at the bottom like the Switch has. You might as well raise or just, just go the distance here, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, I kind of like the at least the look of it, the kind of the blacked out look there and uh, the, the LEDs at the top that light up green. If we go through here a little bit, we can see that it does have USB-C ports on the bottom because... Believe it or not, that's where it charges. It doesn't charge through the railings. It looks like that it syncs up through Bluetooth, which they say they have the latency very, very low. And that's a lot of the previews seem to talk about how they didn't seem to have any discernible like input latency or lag or anything. It seemed fine. And then we have kind of these two sliding buttons on either side. I'm thinking those must be uh, the way that you unlock them, which I'm going to show you because we do get a look on the inside where the railing is, how they're locking into place. It doesn't It doesn't have the button on the back that we're used to with like the, the Joy-Con like controllers where you have a button that you press down and you could slide them off at the top. It looks like you would uh, basically slide that over and then maybe push up, I guess, is how that would work. Uh, I'm not sure how how I, I kind of like the button just on the back where you press it and you just lift it off, but uh, that's that's the way they went here. The charge ports on the bottom are not in a bad place. If you remembered, I took a look at Joy-Con controllers, specifically those GameCube ones, where they were pretty much uh, in the spot that you would be holding it with your palm, and I was concerned about condensation and just other things that could get in there. You're not going to be really anywhere near these while you're while you're using them so not a bad spot I think I'd still like to see a cap over it in some way just to cover it up and make it look you know more flush and everything but it's it's concaved in it's out of the way okay sure uh, that's that's just the way they went with it okay so here is the inside with the railing Again, this is from Android Authority. I'll leave a link to this uh, this down below if you want to kind of check it out a bit more yourself uh, but this, appears to be how they're doing this. We have the railing dead set in the middle and it would slide in. And then on the bottom there, we have uh, pretty much a locking mechanism that when you press down, it'll click into place. It almost looks like this little kind of this little ball down here that would that would uh, click in. And then I assume on the bottom there, you have that piece that slides and I guess it would uh, let it jump back over. Uh, so, I mean, if you get a good click sound and everything and it's solid, not not too bad. It, it's it's simple enough, I think. Here, it's nothing crazy. Uh, I just don't, I'm not 100% sold on the button placement on the bottom to unlock it with a slide. And then on the top, we can see we have, of course, L1, L2, R, R1, R2. Again, very looking very very similar to the Joy-Con controllers. I mean, if it works, it works, and that's kind of what Razer's thinking here. I think they changed up the front facing with symmetrical sticks and A and B being in different spots and. It looking more like a D-pad rather than just four buttons to to kind of, I, I guess, dodge the, hey, you're copying off us kind of thing. I mean, it, it, they are a little larger, as you can see here, and it is working with a phone. Here's the thing. They they provide cases, and that's how it attaches. Like, this is, uh, this is their Razer phone, of course. So it comes with the case. You put the phone in the case, and then it slides on either side of that casing because, well, a phone isn't doesn't come with railings or anything to slide into it. They had like the flagship phones, I believe like the, uh, I think Note 9, S10, and the Razer phone here. Nothing for iOS yet. This is all working on Android. Now it will work on any Android phone that is currently running Nougat at least. And you would just pretty much have to sit your phone somewhere and it would sync up through Bluetooth. It's using Bluetooth low, low energy, so LE. And a cord this is according to Razer. I don't know anyone who's gonna be testing this for a while. These will get a hundred hours of battery life. That that is really good. Uh, that means that some people wouldn't have to charge these things for months at that point. And I'm wondering how reviewers are going to be able to test this well enough, considering you'd have to charge your phone many times over before you would then have to charge their Razer Jungle Cat controllers. To get that kind of battery life, though, is, is impressive. Now, I didn't see anything really mentioned about rumble or IR sensors or motion controls. Uh, nothing like that. So, what I think I'm going to do 
is I think I'm going to order these because they're available now. Again, they're $100, but they're available now. And I am interested in Razer's take on these, specifically the build quality inside of these controllers because uh, once again, that could show us some ideas that maybe even Nintendo themselves are thinking about. And of course, the control sticks are very interesting considering these look similar to a uh, to a Joy-Con controller. Apparently in the Razer app, you can change, I guess, the, uh, the sensitivity of those of those joysticks so maybe they're a bit different uh we've talked about drifting issues and stuff and i think nintendo has been trying to figure that out in the background but this could be a whole nother look at joysticks for joy cons going forward as well so i think that's what i'm gonna do i think i'm gonna order it we'll take a look we'll open it up in a tech wave and it could be pretty fun but let me know what you think about these jungle cat controllers from Razer. I, I think they're interesting. I don't think it's going to compete with the Joy-Cons at all. I I don't think Razer's going to sell like a boatload of these or anything, but you know what? It could be it could be fun to see some other companies kind of come up with some ideas around these low profile attachable controllers. Yes, these are for mobile phones, but I mean, Nintendo could pull some ideas from them, of course, and uh, kind of go forward there. I think we've seen enough of companies getting mad at other companies over what are I think pretty standard at this point with controllers. We just saw Game Vice get pretty much wiped out by Nintendo, that whole lawsuit. So uh, I don't think Nintendo is looking at Razer like, oh, we just fought off Game Vice, but now we're going to come after you. Nah, it's, I don't think it's worth their time anyway. But let me know uh, what you guys think about the Razer Jungle Cat down below. Make sure you like the video, guys. On the way out, if you enjoyed it, dislike it if not. And I'll see you guys next time.